Now, you're very welcome back. So we are turning to an Irish athlete who is tearing it up, frankly. Every time she runs, she seems to break a record at the moment. Uh, we are talking about Rashida Adeleke, who has announced a new deal, by the way, with Allianz Insurance. It's a partnership. They are uh, very much committing to support Rashida's bid to compete at the Olympic Games in Paris next year. And we are very happy to say Rashida Adeleke is with us on the line. Great to have you on. Good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Good to talk to you too. You're too good at the moment. Oh my God, what's happening? <laughs> no, I, I'm really working hard towards, you know, achieving all the kind of goals I've set out for this year. So definitely need to keep <laughs> keep pushing forward. Good. Well, you're going to need new goals pretty soon at this rate. If people uh, missed this over the last couple of days, you uh, said a new double C double A indoor record for 400 meters. You set the 13th fastest 400 meter indoor time of all time. This was in Texas running for uh, Texas University. Uh, you broke your own national record at the 400 meters, ran a time of 50.33 seconds. I watched the race for anybody who didn't see it. Uh, by the end of the first lap, you were well clear. You stayed well clear, you annihilated the field, and then you looked up at the clock and thought, woohoo, I've done it again. That's about the gist. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, kind of sounds like a routine now. Almost. <laughs> but no, definitely. Um, it's been really exciting running the 400 metres this year. I kind of just tap into my potential and seeing what I can do. Um, each race has been getting better, so I'm really excited for my next race and see what I can do. Yeah, I'll bet you are. When mm -hmm. Rashida did the idea to first run uh, 400 occurred? Were, were coaches saying this to you almost, you know, five, ten years ago, like Rashida, you know, eventually you will run 400 metres or has it been something that's that's arisen more lately? Um, I guess due to my build, I'm very like tall, I'm like lengthy, I have a long stride and slim and stuff. And I guess when I was younger, they'd always assumed that I'd be a really good 400 meter runner or a, I've heard 800 meter runner and I definitely wouldn't go that far up in distance. So, you know, um, they've always thought I was going to, especially after I started doing the sprints more. So, and when I ran the four by four a couple of times in college and I would split fast times in the four by four relay and a lot of people would speculate that I'd be really good at the 400 meters and I was um, but really because of my build honestly okay. and I guess they were right I kind of tried to run away from it for as long as I could because you know I'd always hear about how you know hard it was and how hard the training was but like now I can see it. the training definitely is hard but um, I can definitely see that I'm kind of tapping into my potential in the 400 meters and how much potential I can have in the future. So I think I think it was a good decision and a good call from a lot of people. Yes, <laughs> clearly. And remind mm -hmm. us, when did you really start focusing on the 400 meters in your training? When did that start? So I started training for the 400 meters in October. So as soon as, well, whenever my break was over from the season, I started training for the 400 meters. It was definitely like a big big adjustments due from the short sprint training. It's definitely hard and more strenuous on the body, but um, I can see the results. So I'm really happy with how it's been going. Wow. Only since October. I mean, these results mm -hmm. are quick. You must be thrilled. No, yeah, I'm, like, I'm really excited um, to be able to improve this much. These are like times people would wish to run in their entire career. And yeah. after four months of training, I'm running it indoor. So like, I'm not absolutely delighted with the progress I've made. And I'm really excited to see where I can go if, after a year of training or two years of training, three years of training. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. I didn't realize it was that recent. That's incredible to be running these yeah. times. I mean, that that is so exciting for you. Uh, the training difficulties uh, you mentioned. So, I mean, I, I the 400 meters is like always like famously talked about as so difficult because you're almost full speed for almost the full amount of time and yeah. people talk about the you know that, that that last 100 meters as being just no fun at all so what's that like yeah um i know when i was running it last year the last 100 last 50 i'd be so tight so tense i feel like i'd run it i was running backwards honestly <laughs> but now because i've actually trained for it and I'm a little bit more used to it. I know how to kind of somewhat pace myself that it actually doesn't seem as bad. It's really just your training. The training is absolutely awful. Um, the training definitely <laughs> makes me want to reconsider my career choices. Um, you know, like maybe I don't want to be a professional athlete. <laughs> but now you kind of see after 20 minutes when you're not hurting anymore, you snap out of it and be like, okay, that was a good session. Okay. 
So that, that's definitely the worst part. What is the worst part of 400 metres training that you didn't have to do for shorter distances? Just the long, like the, the long runs with reduced recovery. So like we might have something that I definitely wasn't exposed to before. It was like in um, fall season, we'd be doing like 600s and 500s and repeat 400s. And I'd never run over 300 meters in training before. So like now that being that distance being doubled was so absurd to me like running the 600 meters and training like i was just not used to it and i would die like every day like after i'd get to like past the 200 i'd be like okay that's me now i'm just gonna <laughs> jog the rest of the way <laughs> uh i gotta pick you up there you said fall season i mean you've only been in america two years look at you oh, this gosh. is unbelievable <laughs> no i I sometimes find myself picking up on some little lingo, some little slang and little yeah. things like, you know, I'm going to the shopping centre, like I'm going to the mall. I'm like, oh my oh God, no. I need to stop. Oh no, I'm going to go to the mall and get the elevator. I can hear it now. Yeah, oh, I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, because um, when I watch, and, and, and I, this is the question, I suppose, when I watched you run that 400 metres, this record-breaking 400 metres, it looked to me like your pace was very steady or, and I'm, I'm, just I'm not working off the clock there. I'm just judging it by your, by your body language. It looked like yeah. you started at a pace and you kept that pace. Is that what's happening in reality or are you trying to go faster on lap two or uh, how, how do you map it out tactically? So lap one is always faster because you have more energy. So you're fresh. So you try to kind of go out fast in lap one and the momentum from lap one will bring you around in lap two. Okay. So hopefully you, like, you just hope that you're strong enough to maintain. So you, each 400 runner usually runs about three seconds slower on their second lap. Right. But it doesn't really seem like it because you're still trying to run fast because you're tired. It feels harder and it feels faster. Yes. So um, that's usually how it goes. So what I'm trying to do now is kind of go out even faster my first lap and remain the same speed my second lap. That's okay. kind of what I'm focused okay. on. Yeah. So use that speed that you've had for the early part of your career and then have yeah. the endurance kick in. Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay. And how much faster do you suspect you could run that first lap? Maybe like, I could honestly run it way faster, but it's kind of how much will I pay for my second lap. Yes. So <laughs> um, you definitely don't want to be walking back home um, on the last 50 because you'll definitely get caught by all your competition. So I was kind of just half finding that happy medium. Like if I go out this hard, that's what I'm trying to do with my coach right now at training. Yeah. So kind of get used to that pace. So like if I go out this hard, um, how how fast can I return my second lap? So that's definitely something we're trying to figure out together. And based on it's a lot of it is based on how fast you're running an open 200. So my 200 PB is 22, 50, 52. Yeah. And that was this season so i know if i go out in about 23 maybe five i'll be able to come back strong so i'm trying to even see if i can come back a little bit faster because yeah. i ran that 200 early in the season so I'm, I sh I'm much faster than i am than i was then so i was just kind of trying to figure that out yeah i'll yeah. bet and you know what strikes me so one of the great challenges you'll have and you're you're too modest to talk about olympic finals which is where everybody tells me you're <laughs> headed so uh, i'll say it you don't have to say it but say, let's say the biggest day of your life race wise, mm -hmm. it's going to be so difficult if you think of the adrenaline and the crowds and the lights not to just yeah. take off in that first lap. So difficult to contain yourself. Yeah, um, I feel like in regards to my past and the fact that I've always been scared to go out in general because I'm scared I'll die because I, was, I wasn't strong enough to run the 400 meters. So I've kind of gotten used to that. And I've kind of adapted that go out slow and like try catch people at the end and see how much strength you have left. Yeah. So hopefully by then I'll be kind of, you know, I'll be kind of used to going out fast and being able to hold it. Hold it and yes. I'll, know, I'll have the confidence that I can hold it. And in, in training, have you experimented with going as fast as you bloody can lap one and seeing what you do in lap two? Is, is, is that how you calibrated in, in training? No, um, that would be interesting to see though, honestly. Yeah. Video that, will um, you? Send but, it to us. Yeah, if I do, yeah, I'll absolutely send it to you because <laughs> it would be awful to look at. Um, but, um, yeah. You do. But no, we haven't, that's not how, it's usually based on 
again, the 200 PR and what we do, a session that one of the hard sessions that we do is like you do multiple 200s with a really, really short recovery. Mm. And it's usually your last, your very last 200. It's supposed to tell you how fast you can finish your 400 meters in. Okay. So my coach is a lot of like maths and, you know, there's a lot of like detail that goes into it. So he'll take whatever you run that last 200 in and that really hard workout and he'll take that. You usually add a second to it and that's what you'd finish in. So then he'd ha- add that with your 200 PR mm. and which is, it's a lot of, yeah, it's really complicated. Yeah, he, now, like, yeah. he, kinda tries, yeah, he tries to explain it to me and I just do exactly what he tells me to do. Honestly. Okay, trust the science yeah. and the experience. Yeah, I just trust. Yeah. He's like a scientist almost. Yeah. So I just trust the process. So I'll, I'll run, you talk, deal. Yeah, right. basically. <laughs> uh, University of Texas. Why did you pick Texas? Um. So one of the main reasons was Coach Flo reached out to me. And at the time, I didn't really know much about collegiate coaches. And I kind of looked at his resume and he coached world record holders, world champions, Olympic medalists all the good stuff and just seeing how you know how many accolades he has as a coach how decorated he is and he can coach multiple distance multiple events and that kind of what drew me to actually look at the university of texas as an option and then when i kind of did my research i went on a visit and academically the university of texas is second to none honestly like um to be able to have that then the resources and the facilities that we have combined with the education aspect, you know, it's a very prestigious, prestigious university. Mm. Um, it's a power five school in the US. And, you know, it's very, very hard to get into. So having that combination of those two and also like the social aspect, the University of Texas is in Austin. Um, it's a very like lively city. It's very young yeah. and there's a lot to do. So I feel like it would benefit me. It just gave me the environment that I needed to be able to succeed in every single aspect Amazing. of my life. Just so many opportunities in Austin. And what so, what yeah. what are you studying, Rashida? Um, I'm studying corporate communications. Okay. Mm-hmm. Going well? Demanding? Yeah, it is. It's kind of like business, but you can also go into like um different specters like HR and like media. And I feel like because I, I was studying economics and I kind of chose that for the fact that, you know, it's very progressive and, you know, post athletics wise but it just wasn't something that i was interested in so mm. i decided to kind of go into um, a second i was interested in and i feel like athletics would give me a lot of opportunities in corporate in the corporate world so um it's really it's really interesting what i'm learning and a lot of it can actually help me as an athlete okay fantastic mm-hmm. and do you feel homesickness or are you happy out life is good because even in the 10 minutes we've spoken which obviously is not a, a full representation of anybody's mood you seem like mm-hmm. you're in a, in a very happy place are, are you finding it tough being away or no um it can be hard sometimes you know um having my family so far away it's, but my mom calls me every five minutes so <laughs> so it's, it's honestly it feels like she's here and i have a really good like team environment like i like definitely one of the reasons why i came here in the first place the team is very like family orientated especially because we have so many international students um we all kind of get along really well we have you know team gatherings team functions so you know like game nights and stuff so right. you know we're all very close so it kind of gives me that family environment like family away from home so it's the wonderful yeah. thing about sport isn't it uh, yeah. any advice to any young person going to college I, I, if they ask me i would always say even if you're not sport, sporty find something because you'll just plug into 20 people in most uh, team sports that you'll be mates with Absolutely. instantly yeah, absolutely. And it's even why a lot of the reason why I tell people to stay in sports, you know, because I know a lot of people tend to quit sports due to not seeing progression or not reaching their, you know, athletic goals, etc. But like even just the social aspect, a lot of my friends I have are athletes and I've met them at competitions from different countries, etc. And a lot of the connections I've made is due to sports. And like, I just feel like it just gives you so much more opportunity because you'll see people from all different types of walks of life. Um, participating in your sport or you'll see them at competition so yeah. I just feel like it gives you so much opportunity because in your record breaking run of late the 50.33 run it, people may not realise it was a Texas 1-2 and yeah. so I I was I must say across my mind yes it's a team but it's an individual sport so I wondered if yeah. number number two was saying god damn it Rashida I hate you <laughs> <laughs> um, no probably not because you know we 
push each other on. Like he's my main training partner. Um, right. it's, it's usually just us two training together, and like we definitely push each other on. And we definitely know what we can achieve, and we know like, uh, you know, although it is an individual sport, we there's never any hard feelings or anything like that. Yeah, I'll bet. Um, what does the rest of this year look like for you then? What are, what are the big markers that you've got circled in the calendar? Um. Budapest World Championships is definitely one of the highlights um, of this year. Definitely looking forward towards that. And there's also European Under 23s, which is in July. And then you have like NCAA Championships, indoors and outdoors. So those are like the main four mm. um, competitions that would kind of be like the staple competitions throughout the year. And um, you don't have to share them with us. Have you got goals? Have you got certain uh, markers? If I hit those, then I'm then I'm happy. Yeah, I always have goals. Um I sometimes I try to go into competition with no goals because then, you know, you're just kind of open towards anything. But, you know, I do set little minor goals for myself and hope to achieve those. And yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's really usually the goals. Yeah. Very good. How many hours a day are you studying then as well as your training? Um, well, we're getting into midterm season, so we're having a lot of exams and papers due. So it's definitely increased okay. since. So maybe about three four hours okay. a day and you know that's just pure study and then if i have assignments to do that would kind of be on top of that so it's definitely a lot um but trying to just kind of manage it and like reduce procrastination is probably the biggest thing <laughs> you just need to get off the phone put tiktok yeah. away i know it's so tough. sometimes i can tend to be a oh I'll chill now and I'll do it later type of person never works in my favour no well listen I think uh, we can safely put you in the high achieving uh, category you're doing fine uh, con <laughs> congrats on the success well done I mean, a brilliant partnership with Allianz Insurance and they're going to be a support to you uh, yeah. right the way through hopefully to the games in Paris next year and a, an amazing couple of years coming up for you I mean you're flying at the 400 metres it's fantastic mm -hmm. watching you do it for Ireland got to say it's great uh, we're all behind you so keep it going and we'll talk to you soon Thank you so much. Thank you. Rashida Adeleke with us on the line there from Texas.